Hi, I'm Mike, and on this installment of Summit Racing Quick Flicks, we're going to talk about selecting the right carburetor for your application. Before we can determine what size carburetor is right for an engine application, it's important to understand what the carburetor does. The carburetor is going to be an air valve that's going to control the amount of air and fuel entering the engine. The positioning of the butterflies in the carburetor dictates how much air and fuel is entering the engine, which in turn is going to go ahead and control the, the RPM of that engine combination. In turn, this is also going to have a drastic effect on the engine's efficiency as well as the amount of power that it's capable of producing. It's important that all this is correct for your engine combination. This way we don't have a situation where the engine either underperforms, gets poor fuel economy, styling spark plugs, uh, and basically in turn gives you the best running engine possible. So what is CFM rating? Uh, CFM stands for cubic feet per minute. Now when you hear CFM you automatically assume that this is relating to fuel supply. Well that's only part of the equation. When we look at the CFM rating of a carburetor we're talking about cubic feet per minute of air and fuel that's passing through the carburetor. The higher the number gets means the, the more ability this carburetor has to supply more air and fuel than that engine type. There are three factors that come into play when selecting the correct CFM carburetor for an engine. The three things we're going to look at are engine cubic inch displacement, we're going to look at the max RPM of the engine, and we're going to also look at how the vehicle is going to be used, whether it's going to be used for a street uh, application or a drag race application. All three of these combined then are going to give us the end result as far as what size CFM carburetor is right for our specific situation. Now what you'll, always, what you'll typically notice is that the street carburetor selection, even though the engine combination may be the same in cubic inch displacement and in max RPM, the carburetor sizing will be different between if it was going to be used on a drag race vehicle in comparison to a street vehicle. Because in a street application, the carburetor only needs to run at a roughly 80 to 85 percent volume efficiency, which basically means that the carburetor does not have to be able to get the engine to its maximum RPM consistently, which in turn is going to give us better throttle response and better fuel mileage. Whereas in a race application, we're going to run at 110 percent volume efficiency which means that we're going to go ahead and exceed the CFM uh, needs of the engine by giving it a slightly larger carburetor than it needs. This in turn gives us the full potential of the engine, but on the back side of that, what that does hurt is it hurts fuel economy as well as uh, low end throttle response in some specific applications. The formula for selecting the proper CFM carburetor for an application is as follows. Cubic inch displacement, times engine max RPM times volume efficiency divided by 3, 4, 5, 6. This can change depending on vehicle application because the volume efficiency number will change in this formula. For example, if we had a 302 cubic inch engine that had a max RPM of 6,000 and it was a street application which means we would use 0.85 for the volume efficiency number, this would give us a CFM rating of 445.65. In comparison in a race car with the same engine but instead using 110% uh, of volume efficiency, this would give us a CFM rating of 576.73. A vacuum secondary carburetor is commonly used in, in street vehicle applications. And it's also common to vehicles that have an automatic transmission. Reason for this is that the secondaries will be opened off an of engine load. You'll notice as I open up the throttle completely that the, the secondary do not open at all when, when, there is, when the carburetor is not actually installed on the engine. That's because the secondaries are going to be actuated by engine load or engine vacuum as you can see here as I push this lever on the side of the carburetor. The reason why this is so desirable for a street car is because it's typically more responsive, 
and it's going to supply better fuel mileage as an end result. In comparison, a mechanical secondary carburetor is common to race applications and vehicles with manual transmissions. The reason for this is, is that the butterflies on the carburetor, the secondary butterflies, are connected to the primary butterflies via a linkage setup. And as, as throttle position changes, the butterflies are directly um, related to one another and open via a mechanical linkage setup, which is on the side of the carburetor here. This gives, makes this type of carburetor more consistent, especially for race applications. And in a manual transmission application, it's also valuable due to the fact that a manual transmission vehicle typically exerts a different type of load on the engine in comparison to an automatic transmission vehicle. For more quick flicks, visit the Summit Racing YouTube channel. Visit Summit Racing online at www.summitracing.com. Follow us on Twitter at twitter.com backslash summit racing. Or like Summit Racing on Facebook at facebook.com backslash summit racing equipment.